Greetings, my young Padawans. This is Lesson 3-1, Solving Quadratic Equations. For now, we're going to focus on three basic ways to solve quadratic equations. We're going to talk about graphing, we're going to talk about using square roots, and we're going to talk about factoring. There are other methods for solving quadratic equations, but these are the three that we're going to start with. So first, let's talk about graphing. The first thing you want to make sure is you want to make sure that you have your quadratic equation set equal to zero. And then you can graph the quadratic equation. Think about what we had been doing in the end of the last chapter, the way you did in that chapter two test, where it was either in vertex form or it was in standard form. You're going to find that most of these will be in standard form. So you're going to need to remember that opposite of b over 2a thing like we did in section 2.2 specifically. If you need to, go back and reference that video and see it again. The solutions to the quadratic equation is going to be the x-intercepts. Let me show you what I mean. Here's an equation, x squared minus x minus 6 equals 0. And if you notice, I graphed this equation over here on the side. So I took a look and I did the whole opposite of b over 2a thing, right? So that would be negative 1 over 2 times 1 to get that x-intercept of negative 1 half, which is right here. But that's really not what the important thing is. The important thing is this two points right here, the two x-intercepts the two x-intercepts that you will see here, you'll see one at x equals three, and you will see one at x equals negative two. And those actually end up being the solutions to this quadratic equation, the two x-intercepts. If you're gonna to try to graph this thing by hand, you're gonna to have to be really careful with how you plot your points and making sure you get a really good table of values. But if you use Desmos, this is going to be a very easy way for you to solve any quadratic equation. So remember, as I said, it's very important to try to set your quadratic equal to zero first. You'll see that this one is not set equal to zero. And what this really is going to do is you're going to see this quadratic right here, this negative 2x squared minus 2, that's represented by the red curve. And you're going to see the 4x, that's represented by the blue line. And if you're going to try to solve it like this, what you're really looking for is you're looking for where these two things intersect. I'm telling you that's not the way you want to do it. You want to set it equal to zero. Because when you set it equal to zero, which is what I've done here in this problem by subtracting 4x from both sides, you'll see that you're just looking for the x-intercept, which is right over here, which is right here. You'll see it right there at x equals 1. So you know that that is the solution to this quadratic equation. Graphing quadratics is really easy, provided it meets a very nice x-intercept. If it doesn't, then we're gonna to have to rely on one of our other methods of solving. The second method that was on our list is solving using square roots. Now it's really important that when you're solving using square roots, you have to have it in the form something squared. And there can't be another variable here. You can really only see an x squared in each of these problems. Like you see here in example one and example two, you'll see that in number one, for example, we have four x squared minus 31 equals 33. There's nothing else there going on in this equation. Number two, you got 2x squared plus 14 equals 70. There's no x term by itself and an x squared term. There's only an x squared term. So let me show you how to handle this. So let's look at problem number one. 4x squared minus 31 equals 33. You're going to solve this just like you would any other problem, any other uh, type of equation, multi-step equation. So you'll add your 31 to both sides. The 31s here will still cancel out, and you're left with 4x squared equals, was that 64? Now what are you going to do? Well, again, just like you would in any other multi-step equation, you'll divide both sides by 4. See, we undo addition and subtraction, then multiplication and division. When we do that, you'll get x squared equals 64 divided by 4, which is 16. Okay, so now this is the part that's new. So we have undone the addition or subtraction, we undid the multiplication. Now we have to undo this exponent that we see right here. We have to somehow get rid of the squared. How do we get rid of a squared? We take the square root of both sides. Now, here's the thing that's most important. Whenever you take the square root of both sides, you need a plus or minus in front of that. Now, why is that? Why is that? Because this step right here really asks me, what number squared, what number squared equals 16? 
And of course, we know that 4 squared gives me 16, but so does a negative 4 squared. That also gives me 16. So when I'm taking the square root of both sides to solve, i got to remember to have that plus or minus, or I'm going to forget half of my solutions to this problem. Let's go over and look here at number 2. Same idea. We'll subtract our 14. Those will cancel. I'm left with 2x squared equals uh, 70 minus 14, which is 56. I divide both sides by 2. I'll get x squared equals 28. And now I'll take the square root of both sides. All right, what do I end up with? I end up with x equals the square root of 28. Hmm, plus or minus the square root of 28. Now you got to remember something. The square root of 28, you got to think back to geometry and simplifying radicals. Oh no, we will address this later on. But for now, you need to remember how to simplify a square root. So I'm looking for the biggest perfect square that I can divide into 28, and that's 4. Right, so I have the square root of 4 times the square root of 7. That's the same as the square root of 28. And if I simplify that down, I get 2 square roots of 7. If you're a little shaky on this, it's okay. Make sure you ask some questions about how to simplify radicals when it comes up. Final answer is x equals plus or minus 2 square roots of 7. Let's take a look at two more problems. Here's number 3. Again, we're going to subtract our 9 from both sides. Give me 3x squared equals a negative 9. Divide both sides by 3. That'll give me x squared equals a negative 3. I'll take my square root of both sides. Now, you should notice something here. This is a negative square root, and that's no good. That's not any good. So since we can't take the square root of a negative number, this problem number 3 actually has no solution. That's kind of interesting that we can end up with that. You'll see number four looks a little different, right? But notice it's still in that format. We still have something squared. That something just happens to be in a set of parentheses. So how do we get, how do we figure that out? Well, we're still going to undo things in the opposite that we did them in to begin with. So if you'll see, if we follow this order of operations, we took the x, we added three, we squared it, then we multiplied by two-fifths. Since multiplying by two-fifths is the last thing I did, it's the first thing I need to undo. So how do I undo multiplying by two-fifths? Well, I multiply by the reciprocal. So I'm going to multiply both sides of my equation by five-halves. Then that will cancel right there. And I'm left with x plus 3 squared equals, that's 25 over 2. Now what? Well, now I'm going to take the square root of both sides because I've got that something squared. That something squared is isolated. So I can take the square root of both sides. That gives me x plus 3 equals, don't forget it, plus or minus the square root of 25 over 2. All right, square root of 25 over 2. Oh, my. Well, we got to remember that that is actually the same as the square root of 25 over the square root of 2. And if you remember in geometry, we didn't like radicals on the denominator, so we had to rationalize that denominator, which gave me my uh, simplified version of the square root of 50 over 2. So I'm going to put that back over in my problem now. So x plus 3 equals plus or minus the square root of 50 over 2. And then I can subtract 3 from both sides. That'll give me a final answer of negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 50 over 2. Folks, don't expect to get nice answers here. It's very hard to make a quadratic equation cross the x-axis at a perfect spot and to have a quadratic equation work out to be a nice number like you guys like to have. You'll see a lot of decimals when you use a calculator. You'll see a lot of square roots in these problems. So take a minute right now, pause the video, and I'd like you to try these five problems. Please use the method that I'm asking you to move, or use for specific reasons. So like for one and two, solve with graphing, and for three, four, and five, solve using square roots. I'll show you the solutions here in a second. So if you use Desmos to graph these two equations, you should come up with these answers, right? So for number one, you should see, you should see the two x-intercepts here at negative five and at two. And that's why the solution to this quadratic equation is x equals negative 5 and x equals 2. As for number 2, it crosses the x-axis here at 3, so the only solution is x equals 3. We actually have work to do with number 3 and 4, so let's get to it right now. 
Let's go ahead and solve these. So let's see here. I'll subtract 14 from both sides. That'll give me 2x squared equals 56. I'll divide both sides by 2. That'll give me x squared equals 28. Now it's time to take the square root of both sides. And that will give me x equals plus or minus the square root of 28. When I simplify down the square root of 28, I get two square roots of 7. That's the answer to number 3. Number 2. 3 fourths times the quantity of x plus 1 squared. So the first thing I'll do, first thing I'll do here is I will multiply both sides by 4 thirds. Let's see, 4 thirds. Okay. That'll get me x plus 1 squared equals 40 over 3. All right. Then I'll take the square root of both sides. Take the square root of both sides. I get x plus 1 equals. I can't forget that plus or minus. Plus or minus the square root of 40 thirds, 40 over 3, which if I simplify down or rationalize my denominator, that'll give me the square root of 120 over 3. I know it's hard to believe that that can't be simplified down anymore, but it can't be. That's it. That's what it's going to be. So my final answer is going to be, after I subtract 1 from both sides, negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 120 over 3. Gross, but that's it. All right, finally, number five here. Again, same process as I've been going through. I'll subtract my 20 from both sides. I'll divide both sides by four. I'll get x squared equals negative one. And you know what? That's where I'm going to stop right there because I know that I can never square a number and get a negative value. There's no number that I could possibly square and get a negative number. So no real solution to number five. No real solution. This brings us to our third and final uh, method of solving a quadratic equation that we'll talk about today, and that's solving by factoring. Now, folks, it's got to be set equal to zero. If you don't set it equal to zero, you can't solve it by factoring. See, because it works upon something over here called the zero product rule. The zero product rule says that if I have two things that are multiplied together and they equal zero, then one of those two things has to equal zero or is equal to zero. Let me show you what I mean. So with number one, it's not set equal to zero. We need to set it equal to zero first. I'll subtract 45 from both sides. It's now set equal to zero. And now I just go into factor mode like I did back in the previous uh, review concepts that we did. So I'm going to look for that pair of numbers that multiplies together to give me negative 45. Adds together to give me negative 4. I'm really good at this right now. I know that that's negative 9 and positive 5. So I change my quadratic equation, I factor it. Once it's factored, I'm going to take each one of these individual factors and I'm going to set them equal to zero. So I'll take x minus 9 and I'll set it equal to zero. I'll take x plus 5 and I'll set it equal to zero. And I'm going to solve these equations independently, unrelated to each other. And you'll see that I get two different x values. These are the actual solutions to the quadratic equation. If we go back and we plug 9 into the original problem, we get 9 squared minus 4 times 9, and we'd find that that does, in fact, equal 45, right? 9 squared is 81, minus 4 times 9, which is 36, 81 minus 36, 45. Check it out. We do the same thing with negative 5. Negative 5 squared minus 4 times negative 5 equals 45. Well, negative 5 squared is 25. Negative 4 times negative 5 is positive 20. We got 25 plus 20. Guess what it is? 45. That's really nice that we came up with two solutions. We go over here to number 2. Same idea, except now we have that a not equal to 0. So you're either going to use that guessing and checking. You're going to use Xbox. I'm not sure what your favorite method of factoring is, but I do know that when you factor this thing down, you're going to get 2x minus 3 times x minus 4 same idea applies. We take each one of these individual factors and we're going to set them equal to zero. So we'll take 2x minus 3, set it equal to zero. We'll take x minus 4 equal to zero. We're going to solve these equations independently of each other. Let's see here. We'll get x equals 3 over 2. For the other equation, we'll get x equals 4. Those actually end up again being the solution to this quadratic equation. 
So now I'd like you to pause the video and I'd like you to try these four problems that we got going on. Yep, go ahead, pause the video. Oh, no, wait, wait. You read the directions, didn't you? Find the zeros of the function. We didn't go over that, Mr. Halm. What's up with that? We didn't talk about that in this video. Guess what, folks? That's because number three and four are done exactly the same way as number one and number two. I just gave different directions, but it means the exact same thing. You're just going to change that f of x equal to zero and then solve that quadratic equation like normal. I'll show you when we get to number three, but see if you can figure it out on your own. Right now, pause the video. Try one through four for me, please, right now. I'll be here when you get back. All right, so we're going to solve these guys by factoring. So again, we're going to look for that pair of numbers that multiplies together to give me 35, but adds together to give me 12. Hmm, what could it be? How about 5 and 7? Yeah, it is. 5 plus 7 is 12, and 5 times 7 is 35. That's got to be what it is. We'll take each one of those individual factors, and we'll set them equal to 0. We're going to solve them independently. So I come up with an answer of negative 5 and negative 7. All right, all right, all right. Let's go on to number 2. Here we go. 3x squared minus 5x ooh, minus 2 equals 0. So now we got to go into my factoring mode here, and i got to figure out by using that favorite method of factoring that I have. And i got to figure that out. Mm, let me see here. I think I got it. It's x minus 2 and 3x plus 1. Go ahead, check it. I'm right. And that's going to be set equal to 0. Then we're going to take each one of these factors. We're going to set them equal to 0 independently of each other. And I'll get x equals 2. And when I solve the other one, I'm going to get x equals negative 1 over 3. All right, very good. Let's go on to number three and four here. I told you that these weren't any different than the previous problems. Here's all we're going to do. We're going to say zero equals 4x squared minus 13x plus 3. And then we're just going to factor this, solve this by factoring. So let's see here. This factors to 4x minus 1 and x minus 3. And again, we'll just set each one of those factors individually equal to zero. We'll get x equals 3 we'll get x equals 1 fourth. These are not only the solutions to that quadratic equation, they are also the zeros of the function. You may see your textbook refer to that. Let's go to number four. Zero equals x squared minus 8x. Oh, trying to fool me, aren't you, Mr. Halp? That's not a three-term quadratic, that's a two-term quadratic. That means we just pull out the GCF, which is in fact x in this problem. It doesn't change what we do. We still have two factors. X is one of those factors, and X minus 8 is the other. So we're going to set each one of those factors equal to 0 and solve them individually. And we end up with our two solutions, 0 and 8 for this particular problem. All right, folks, that's all the lesson I got for you now. Hope you understood it. If you have any questions, don't be afraid to ask. Good luck on your classwork tomorrow.